Good evening and welcome to this Christmas Eve service, our 5.30 service with the children just pre uh, presenting a wonderful message. Let us begin this time of worship and sing in uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we stand and sing, O Come All Ye Faithful, verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is a holy time, a precious time in the, in the Christian life that we can, with proud, anxious, excited hearts say that the Lord is not only with us, the Lord is within us as well. So I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Christmas Eve. Jim White, will you come up for a second? Chuck Collins, would you come up here, please? We're not going to dance. Oh, there you go. Yes, you can. I can. Uh, it's my privilege, Chuck, on behalf of the congregation to present to you a small token for your service at Common Union and Second Service. So it's Again, my privilege to present this small token to you. Why, thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you. Merry Christmas. Let us continue our worship. Good evening. 
peace of Christ be with you. Let us take a deep breath in and out, relax, and let the Holy Spirit fill you with his presence as we all try to imagine being touched by God in the way that Mary was. What an unfathomable responsibility to carry and give birth to the Redeemer of the whole world. As we celebrate such an awe-inspiring event, may we let all our rejoicing be for our Lord Jesus Christ. will come forward, please. Joy is truly the mark of Christmas, and it's easily found in this room. 
but we need to remember that strong faith and courage is also a part of the Christmas story. Just think of Joseph. He found himself in a situation that was difficult to understand, and he knew it would not be popular with his friends. His faith was truly tested, and yet he had the courage to stand by Mary. He made that long trip to Bethlehem, and he celebrated the birth of a king. Finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is, it's okay The last thing I need is to be heard But to hear what you would say Word of God speak, would you pour it down like rain Washing my eyes to see your majesty To be still and know that you're in this place Please let me stay and rest in your holiness Would of God Finding myself in the midst of you Beyond the music, beyond the noise All that I need is to be with you And in the quiet hear your voice Would of God speak would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness, the word of God speak. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place please let me stay and rest in your holiness would God speak finding myself at a loss for words and the funny thing it's okay. Thank you, Common Union, Judy. In advance, Haley, Jennifer, and the children will be pre presenting an incredible play of faith. You'll really enjoy it. You'll really enjoy it. It'll lift your hearts up. And as we as we consider this evening, let us go to our Creator and our Redeemer in prayer. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the gift of everlasting life, for the privilege of coming to know you even more completely. Lord God, on this night many years ago, you gave yourself to us. You're not some far away deity. You are our Lord and Savior that dwells within our soul, which walks with us in our time of pain, laughs with us in our time of joy. Lord God, we give you thanks for this privilege to come before you this evening, to give you thanks and praise for this incredible gift. 
Her love truly came down at Christmas. And for that, we give you our eternal thanks and praise. Lord God, as we, we gather here, we gather with joy. There are some heavy hearts among us as well, and we pray that they may be soothed and strengthened. Lord God, on this night, there are many who may be lonely, many who are hungry, uh, many who are unsure of the direction their life is taking. Lord God, we just pray that you intercede in those lives, especially this night. And may we, as your children, uh, see those people in our midst that we may uh, witness your good news through our ministry to them. Lord God, as we pray for your world, we pray for our nation, we pray for our communities, our families and friends, that there may be peace, uh, not only now, but forevermore. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through his disciples, taught us to pray boldly together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Christmas story, as it is found in the gospel according to St. Luke. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there is no place for them in the inn. In that region, there are shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that had taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed and what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is an amazing story of the pure love of God. Every time I hear this story, from the time I first heard it out of Linus's mouth, trying to explain to Charlie Brown, what Christmas was all about. It touched me in a way that um, it changes a little bit every year, and for this year, it's a, it's a little bit different too. Because what I see in, the, in this whole Christmas story is that God uh, didn't reserve a space at the Hilton, did not come to people in huge cathedrals, adorned in lavish uh, adornments like candles and everything, but came in the squalor, in the squalor of a manger, out in the middle of nowhere. Christ came in an utterly common 
You see, Jesus comes to us not far away in, in, in some distant place, but God comes to us where we are, where we find ourselves in life. And sometimes where we find ourselves is not the greatest times. Every once in a while, we may have those down times. Every once in a while, we have loss in our life. Every once in a while, we may have uh, challenges as far as health or or finances or whatever it might be. Uh, Sometimes our lives don't always seem to be together. But you know what? God comes especially in those times. The birth of Jesus epitomizes uh, God's uh, need and want to be with us always, everywhere, every time. God comes to us in the little things. What's been amazing here over the season of Advent here at Fields, uh, folks have been responding through some devotionals that, that I've been writing and amazing responses. I've been talking uh, about uh, asking folks, well, where do they find God? Where do they see God? And, and some said sun rises and sunsets, which is very true. I mean, we see God in all those things. We see God in some of the big things. We, every once in a while, we see God in huge cathedrals. We see God in all those places. But, you know, one person after the other, when asked where they saw the glory of God, was all in the little things of life, the day-to-day, and the people that help them in the stores, the people that they work with, the people that they play with, the people that they worship with, the people who pray with them, the people who cry with them. Those little times are when the people of God meet their Savior, Jesus Christ. And so it was no accident that Jesus came to us in the squalor of a manger. Because sometimes that's where we find ourselves, isn't it? God finds us in the weirdest places because we end up in those places. And that's the glory of God. That's the love of God. Folks, this is a joyous time. Oh, it's been fun preparing, isn't it? It's always fun shopping. I went by Great Northern on 480 this afternoon. Whoa. <laughs> there, are some, there are some people having some fun there. But, you know, it is, it is fun to get out in the crowds. It is fun to, to maybe go look at, see, see what's out there. there. I love those little kiosks that have the ugly sweatshirts and everything. And, and in fact, I talked to a person who, who was selling an ugly sweatshirt and T-shirt, and I, I bought one. And he said, I asked him where he was from, and he said, well, this is the first year I set up here, and at the mall at, at South Park. He's, he's from the Middle East, and, and he said, the last time I, was, I had a booth, it was in a bazaar. And I said, well, how much different is it here than in the Middle East and in the bazaar? He said, here, $25 is $25. He said, in the bazaar in the Middle East, uh, it takes 10 minutes to make a sale. But he said, you know what else he found? He said he found so much love here. He saw so many people smiling and laughing. This is a man from an area of the world that's not laughing as much as it used to, I don't think. But what he witnessed in his little kiosk at the mall were people celebrating their life. People celebrating the joy of their family, of their friends, and, 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 and everything that goes along with it. You see, I think that we see God in the person selling ugly sweatshirts, T-shirts at the mall. We see God in those folks rushing around. And guess what? God not only sees them, but enlivens their soul as well. And so this season of Christmas... The wonder of Christmas is the fact that God has now become one of us. 
and walks with us and sets us free to truly celebrate this incredible life that God has given to each and every one of us. Folks, we are blessed this evening by a God that loves us so much, went through so much, that wanted to assume all that we have and all that stuff that keeps us away from God was nailed to a cross along with him that we may live a new life. And folks, it all began with this birth nearly 2,000 years ago. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for this precious gift of life. Bless us and keep us. May we never forget the joy that you have shared with us this night and every night. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. So as Pastor just said, God finds us. Um, Our children have been working really, really hard um, on our Christmas play. Um, And you're going to see that God finds um, them in the trees, in the forest, Um, and everywhere. So um, thank you ahead of time to Miss Jennifer for helping out and really, really putting together a fantastic set for us today. And we'd like to present to you the littlest Christmas tree. Long ago in the forest, there were three beautiful fir trees. These three fir trees hoped that someday that would be a Christmas tree to some loving family. The trees were very patient, and each day they grew little by little. I'm a little fir tree growing tall. Someday I'll be the best of all. I'll go home with my family, and a Christmas tree is what I'll be. One day, when the weather became cold and the snow began to fall, a family came into the forest. The family walked around all the trees and decided to take home the very biggest tree they could find. The dad brought out his axe and cut the fir tree and off the family went. I'm a little fir tree growing tall. Someday I'll be the best of all. I'll go home with the family, and a Christmas tree is what I'll be. Soon another family came into the forest and went looking for a Christmas tree too. They didn't. They looked at all of the trees and decided they didn't want a great big one, and they didn't want a small tree. They wanted one that was just right. Then they found a tree that filled what they needed. The family was so happy that they found the perfect tree for their house that they cut it down and off they went. The littlest Christmas tree was all alone and he was sad and lonely now that his friends were gone. Will I ever be a Christmas tree, a Christmas tree, a Christmas tree? Will I ever be a Christmas tree for a happy family? 
Soon some beautiful red birds came and sat beside the little fir tree. They brought some feathers and string from their nest. They decorated the little tree with feathers and string. The littlest tree began to feel better. Soon some little bun bunnies hopped over to the little tree after they heard the red bird singing. They brought some berries and snowflakes they had found on the way. They decorated the littlest tree with the presents they had brought as they sang. He was missing one thing, but what was he missing? Soon, the news of the lonely little tree had spread through all of the forest. All of the animals wanted to help make it the little tree feel special. Reindeer came through the forest after hearing the news and decorated the little tree carefully as they hung pine cones on the tree's little branches. The little tree sitting on the forest path was really starting to feel special after all. The little tree realized how much the animals in the forest needed a Christmas tree too. As the, jing as the little tree was thinking these happy thoughts in the distance, he heard some jingling bells down the path. Soon the bells got louder and the littlest tree realized it was a group of carolers. The carolers saw the littlest tree and saw how beautiful it was decorated. They were so filled with the Christmas spirit, they stood around it and sang carols. The carolers left with high spirits. baby and the stars had a big job to do. The stars are going to tell the shepherds about baby Jesus lying in the manger. I'm a little star from the sky. I'll sit on the treetop way up high. I'll shine for you in a special way and twinkle brightly on Christmas Day. The star looked just beautiful on the little tree, and now the tree felt just like a Christmas tree. In fact, he thought he was the most beautiful Christmas tree ever. Don't you think so, too? And year after year, as the little fir tree grew bigger and bigger, the forest animals continued their tradition year after year and made the littlest tree feel the most special of them all.
What a great job. Let's give them another round of applause. That was fantastic. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Haley. Thank you for all the parents that stayed and helped and made sure that was a Christmas to remember. Great job. Trees really do talk. We've talked tonight a little bit about Christmas. Tom expounded upon how God meets us where we are, where that place may not be a place that we want to be or a place that we've been very long or a place that we might have been too long or time and time again. Yet Christ meets us there. And it was, for Mary, an overwhelming responsibility. And we sang about that, that she allowed the Holy Spirit to lead her, a 13-year-old girl, to be led by the Holy Spirit of God. The presence of God took her by the hand and allowed her and Joseph to do as the Lord willed and give birth to the Savior of the world. We know that it was tough for Joseph. He was confused. He didn't understand. And he asked for the word of God to speak. But all of us can share in that holy night where we saw that star in the east in our own particular lives, where we surrendered our lives unto the Lord. And we realized that the life that we were living, although it may have seemed good on the surface, was nothing without our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We just thank you for that holy night. We thank you. And we do. As the Apostle Paul said, when we think about the goodness of the Lord, we fall to our knees and sing in sweet exaltation the praises that you put upon our, our hearts at that particular time. Be with us tonight. Meet us tonight. Fill us tonight. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. All lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the soul felt it. A thrill of hope, a weary soul rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel voice. His 
His power and glory evermore proclaim His power and glory evermore proclaim. Now may God's peace and this gift of salvation that was given this night go with you now even to the end of the age. Go with the peace of Christ in your heart. Amen. Amen. Merry, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.